hello students welcome back to our class in the previous module we discussed about complementary angles supplementary angles vertically opposite angles adjacent angles different types of angles and in this module we'll discuss about transversal properties of parallel lines and some applications on this this is very much important concept in our plane geometry especially related to angles and without this i think we cannot do anything in the concept of geometry so please be focused right okay see these two are two different lines and uh, there is one more line this is one more line let this line be l and this line is m and this line is n see this m and n are intersected by this line l in two distinct points this is one point and this is one more point so if a line intersects two different lines in two distinct points then the line itself is said to be transversal line what do you call that transversal line so transversal line means a line which intersects two different lines in two distinct points then that line is said to be transversal line okay see here l is the transversal line for both the two lines m and n can we say that m is the transversal line for two lines l and m of course because this line m also intersecting l and n in two distinct points so that m can also be considered as transversal line even n can also be considered as transversal line but here this transversal line concept is extended to a pair of parallel lines then we can identify very important inter interesting facts if you apply this transversal property transversal concept for a pair of parallel lines then what kind of interesting facts that you are going to identify that's what we are going to learn now now i am going to take a pair of parallel lines this is one line let this line be for example l <coughs> and this is one more line let this line be some m these two lines are pair of parallel lines and there is one more line this is one more line so this one more line is for example p is the line this line p intersecting the lines l and m in two distinct points of course you can call this point this line p is said to be a transversal line now what are the transversal properties of pair of parallel lines what are transversal properties of a pair of parallel lines if these two lines are parallel lines then only you can identify some properties what are those properties let us try to identify see <coughs> at two distinct points let this point be for example a and this point be for example b a and b are two points of intersection these two are two different points at this point a totally how many number of angles are formed there are totally 1 2 3 4 there are totally four angles are formed and similarly at b again there are four angles are formed those four angles are this is 1 6 7 and 8 so there are totally eight angles are formed let us try to identify what are those eight angles and what is the relationship between them okay see what do you call this 1 and 3 angle 1 and angle 3 both are equal and uh, because they are called vertically opposite angles we already discussed about this angle 1 and angle 3 are vertically opposite angles angle 2 and angle angle 2 and angle 4 also vertically opposite angles angle 5 and angle 7 also vertically opposite angles angle 5 is equal to angle 7 and then angle 6 is equal to angle 8 angle 6 is equal to angle 8 all these are vertically opposite angles right all vertically opposite angles are equal so that this pair of angles are equal and this pair of angles this pair of angles this pair of angles so because these are all vertically opposite angles so 
so that is why all of them are equal and coming here 1 and 2 what are these 1 and 2 1 and 2 are linear pair of angles and of course they are adjacent angles and these are linear pair of angles because these two angles lying on the same straight line at the point A. So, angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees. Similarly, angle 2 plus angle 3 equal to 180, angle 3 plus angle 4 equal to 180, angle 1 plus angle 4 equal to 180. Similarly, here also, but here if you observe and if you measure the angles, if you measure the angles, this angle 3 measurement is exactly same as this angle 5 measurement. Angle 3 and angle 5 measurements will be equal. So, angle 3 and angle 5 measurements are equal and what do you call these angle 3, angle 5, angle 4, angle 6? See, these all angles are in between the parallel lines, in between the parallel lines. That is why these four angles are said to be interior angles these four angles are said to be interior angles, but here in this interior angles one angle is lying one side of the transversal and the other angle is lying other side of the transversal, means what a pair of angles must be interior, a pair of angles must be interior and lying either side of the transversal pair of angles are interior and lying either side of the transversal. What are those angles? See, angle 3 and angle 5, right. These two angles are the angles in between the parallel lines means these two are interior angles and lying either side of the transversal. What are those pair of angles? Angle 3 and angle 5 as well as angle 4 as well as angle 6 this pair of angles are said to be alternate interior angles. What do you call them? Alternate interior angles. So, alternate interior angles are nothing but those two angles must be between parallel lines and uh, lying either side of the transversal. Then they are said to be interior alternate angles and especially they must not be adjacent angles because 3 and 4 are interior only, but 3 and 4 are adjacent angles, but we cannot call this 3 and 4 as interior alternate angles. So, that is why, but not adjacent, but not adjacent angles. So, you must be very clear with the statement or very clear with the definition when a pair of angles are said to be interior alternate angles. Interior alternate angles are the angles lying between both the parallel lines and uh, they lie either side of the transversal but not adjacent angles. So, then they are said to be interior alternate angles. So, angle 3 and angle 5 are a pair of interior alternate angles, they must be equal and angle 4 and angle 6 also interior alternate angles, okay. And this is one more and after that, see if you observe this angle 3 and angle 5 both are equal, you know that angle 3 is equal to angle 5, correct, but you know that angle 3 is equal to angle 1, right, because they are vertically opposite angles. So, angle 3 is equal to angle 1, so by this what can you infer about angles 1 and 5, angle 1 is equal to angle 5, where are those angle 1 and angle 5, angle 1 is equal to angle 5, so here one angle is outside the transversal and one is inside that, outside the transversal is nothing but it is exterior angle and it is interior, but here both of them are lying on the same side of the transversal. So, the pair of angles, let us try to identify how many pairs of such angles. See here, one is angle 1 is equal to angle 5, that is one pair, angle 1 is equal to angle 5. Can you identify this 4 and 8? 4 and 8 also the same kind, right. So, angle 4 is equal to angle 8 and after that here this is 2, 2 and 6 also the same kind, angle 2 is equal to angle 6, what is another one, angle 3 and angle 7, so angle 3 is equal to angle 7. So, this pair of angles are the angles such that one is exterior and one is interior 
and both of them lie on the same side of the transversal, both of them lying on the same side of the transversal, then those pair of angles are said to be a pair of corresponding angles, what do you call them? A pair of corresponding angles, so pair of corresponding angles are equal, see here angle 3 equal to angle 5, angle 4 equal to angle 6, angle 1 equal to angle 5, angle 4 equal to uh, like um, angle 3 is equal to angle 7, these are a pair of corresponding angles, all pairs of corresponding angles are equal, got my point? So, these are different pairs of angles can be identified in the property of transversal line for a pair of parallel lines, ok. So, this is very very important and useful information and useful concept and one more very important thing here is, see you know that angle 3 is equal to angle 5 and angle 4 is equal to angle 6, angle 3 is equal to angle 5 because they are a pair of interior alternate angles, angle 4 is equal to angle 6, then what can you infer about angle 4 and angle 5, angle 4 plus angle 5 is equal to how much? instead of angle 4, you can take angle 3. So, angle 3 plus angle 4, sorry, instead of angle 4, you can take angle 6. So, angle 6 plus angle 3, otherwise angle 4 plus angle 5, which is equal to, because angle 3 plus angle 4 is 180 degrees, right, which is equal to 180 degrees. So, what do you mean by that? You could identify angles here, those angles are 3 and 4, angle 3 plus angle 4 is equal to 180 degrees as well as angle 3 plus angle 4 is 180, but here especially angle 3 plus angle 6 is 180 degrees, that is why I will write here angle 3 plus angle 6 is equal to 180 degrees and then angle 4 plus angle 5, angle 4 plus angle 5 is also equal to 180 degrees. What do you call them? These angles are said to be angle 3 and angle 6, angle 4 and angle 5, their sum is also equal to 180 degrees. Those angles are said to be co-interior angles, what do you call them? Co-interior angles, please do remember these are different types of angles defined on transversal properties of parallel lines. So, you will have to remember everything, these are vertically opposite angles, you know that they are already equal and alternate interior angles, this is a new thing that you need to remember and corresponding angles also you need to remember and co-interior angles also you need to remember. And after that, if you have a problem on this kind of pair of parallel lines and transversal properties, for example, this is a line, name of the line is L and this is another line, name of the line is M, these two lines are parallel lines. And this is one transversal line intersecting both the parallel lines and two distinct points, let it be A and let it be B. And you are given one angle here, this angle is equal to 30 degrees, then you need to find out all the other angles of A as well as B. How do you find all the other angles of A and B? Let us try to understand. Let us say this angle is equal to sum A and this angle is sum B and this angle is C and this angle is D, let it be E, let it be F, let it be some G, okay? these are different angles. Now, I am going to figure out all the values right from A to G, how is that possible for me? See, I know about vertically opposite angles, I know about interior alternate angles, about corresponding angles, about co-interior angles. So, with the help of this, I can easily figure out all these angles right from A to G. First of all, this 30 is equal to which angle? That 30 is equal to its vertically opposite angle, so that the value of E is equal to 30 degrees, because they are vertically opposite angles, ok. And if E is equal to 30 degrees, then that E is related to A as well as E is related to C. How this E is related to C? because they both are interior alternate angles, so that E is equal to C which is also is equal to 30 degrees, because they are interior alternate angles, okay? E is equal to C, but E is equal to A also, right? 
because that E and A are corresponding angles. So, E is equal to A which is also is equal to 30 degrees. See without performing any calculations we are getting all the angles, got it? Okay, fine. So, E is equal to A is equal to 30, we got the values of E, C, A. So, E is equal to C is equal to A is equal to 30 degrees, fine. After that, what next? Fine, A is equal to 30, when A is equal to 30, what about B? Because A plus B is equal to 180 degrees, right? So, A plus B is equal to 180 degrees, a linear pair, A is equal to 30 degrees. So, 30 plus B is equal to 180 degrees, 30 plus how much is equal to 180? Yes, 30 plus 150 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. After getting the value of B, now you can find the values simultaneously. So, B is equal to 150 degrees, right? But that B is exactly same as its vertically opposite angle D. So, B is equal to D is equal to 150 degrees and that D is exactly same as F because D and F are a pair of interior alternate angle. So, D is equal to F. So, D is equal to F also equal to 150 degrees. They are interior alternate angles and D and G also equal right because D and G are a pair of corresponding angles. So, D is equal to G is equal to 150 degrees. See here we got the angles right from B. B, D, F, G. So, B is equal to D is equal to F is equal to G is equal to 150 degrees. Right? See, we got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All the angles are there. See, this way we can easily figure out if you know one angle in the concept of pair of parallel lines by a transversal, you can find out all the other angles in the figure. Hope you understand this. Right. So, coming to the next point, we talk familiarly about a triangle. Right? When you talk about a triangle, the very first thing that we talk is sum of all the three angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Of course, we did so many activities also in our lab activity manual suggested by CBSC board. And if you think logically, how do you know or prove that sum of all the three angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees? So, that is one of the very interesting and important thing that we need to understand. Sum of angles, sum of interior angles more precisely, sum of interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So, what is the sum of interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. You know that, let us consider a triangle, this is one triangle. Okay? Let, the, let us name this triangle as triangle ABC. Okay? What am I going to do here? I am going to figure out what is the sum of all interior angles of a triangle. Means what? This angle plus this angle plus this angle is equal to 180 degrees. That is what I need to prove. Let me take this angle is equal to some small a, this angle equal to small b, this angle equal to small c. So, my aim here is to prove that angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. In order to prove this A plus B plus C is equal to 180, I am going to use the concept of transversal lines between parallel, a pair of parallel lines. How do I do that? Because I do not have any pair of parallel lines here. So, I need a construction that I will take one of the sides, any one of the sides. For example, I will take for our convenience, I will take the side BC and what am I going to do here? I am going to draw a line which is parallel to BC through the point A, got it? This is what my construction. So, here the construction is draw a line for example, L is parallel to BC, that is what the construction here. So, construction is going to be draw L parallel to BC through which point? Through the vertex A. So, after drawing the line, then how can I relate that line which is parallel to BC in order to find out the sum of all interior angles? Here you can understand one thing that 
let us suppose this angle is equal to some x and this angle is equal to some y ok. Since here x plus a plus y is equal to how much these three angles at a point a on the straight line right. So, all the three angles add up to 180 degrees because that is a straight angle when you add all of them you will get 180 degrees. So, I know that angle x plus angle a plus angle y is equal to 180 degrees because that is a straight angle. And if I try to apply my transversal properties of parallel lines, see these two are parallel lines. Can I consider this one as a transversal? Of course, if this is a transversal, then what is the relationship between this angle and this angle? These two are a pair of interior alternate angles, they are obviously equal. So, that I can say that x is equal to b, x is equal to b and similarly, see here now you can take this AC as transversal, so that this angle is exactly same as this angle, got it? Again these two are another pair of interior alternate angles, what are they? The value of y is equal to c you should write here since they are interior alternate angles ok. Now, when I substitute b in the place of x and c in the place of y in the first equation, then the first equation will become x is going to be b and a is a only and y is going to be c which is equal to 180 degrees. It means a plus b plus c is equal to 180 degrees, a plus b plus c is equal to 180. This is the way of proving sum of all the three angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So, please do remember this, this is a technical proof that everybody has to know because we generally talk about sum of all the angles of a triangle equal to 180 degrees, but if you think how it is, then we may not be able to answer. So, this is one of the technical proof in order to prove some of all the interior angles of a triangle equal to 180 degrees. Is it not interesting? So, right. Hope you understand. Thank you.